Narcissism is often characterized by an inflated sense of self-importance and a need for constant validation from others. People with this personality type are often very insecure and may be emotionally manipulative in order to get what they want. In today's video, I'm going to share several important tips to help you heal. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet of this series, I recommend clicking the link in the caption of this video and heading on over there to watch those two parts first, as it will give you a firm foundation for today's activity. For those of you that have been following along, let's do a quick recap of what we've covered so far. We learned about the necessity of normal narcissism in early childhood development, identified the four subtypes of narcissistic presentation, and gained a better understanding of how narcissistic wounding can express itself through the filters of insecure attachment styles. More specifically, we saw how narcissism can express itself through both anxious and avoidant coping strategies. We learned the two most important steps in recovering from narcissistic abuse and, own you, and or your own narcissistic wounding. Now first, this includes developing a more sophisticated and robust emotional vocabulary in order to successfully achieve the second step, and that is accurately identifying your needs and establishing healthy boundaries around them. As an extension of our last video, we are going to wrap up this series today, focusing on conceptualizing and strengthening your boundaries with an art therapy practice and experiential exercise. This is going to involve a guided visualization followed by a drawing activity, so make sure you have at least two pieces of paper and coloring utensils handy. If you're not sure if you want to participate, I invite you to simply watch the demonstration without engaging in the activity first to determine if it feels safe for you to proceed. Now before we dive into it, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Brianna McWilliam, and I am a licensed and board certified creative arts therapist, author, and educator with more than 15 years in the field, helping adults struggling with insecure attachment go from self-doubting to self-sovereign so they can attract those soul-shaking, passionate partnerships that they want without having to talk in circles around their feelings for hours or even years on end with no tangible result. And I do this using a psycho-spiritual approach to creative arts interventions using the McWilliam Method. Today, I'm going to be sharing a clip of a live stream event that took place inside my private Facebook groups, which people can access once they've purchased one of my online courses. If you're interested in finding out if you might have insecure attachment, check out the link in the caption of this video. You'll be able to take an easy four question quiz and find out your attachment style plus a detailed explanation. Now, if you like what you see in here and you haven't yet, make sure that you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. I put up videos once or twice a week, and sometimes I will do occasional live streams through my YouTube channel, and I wouldn't want you to miss out. Okay, so now that we're transitioning into this experiential piece, and this is where we're going to take all of, I know it's a lot of information and knowledge to take in. So this, this activity is intended to be a way for us to really experience this awareness or this information on a felt level, right? Because unless we can embody what we're learning, it's not always very helpful, right? It can just be a lot of insight without any kind of real felt changes on the emotional level. And then we get caught in what I call double troubles, which is when we beat ourselves up for beating ourselves up, right? Or we are anxious about how anxious we are. Or now we have all this information to tell us how we're misbehaving. And then we start beating ourselves up for not being healed enough, right? For all the knowledge I have, why am I not healed enough yet, right? So this is where the experiential exercises are intended to draw all of that down into the, the the felt experience so that we can feel our way through life instead of trying to think our way around it. Now, first, we're going to do sort of like a baseline drawing. And I invite you to choose any color you want. We're going to just draw a figure on the page. And this is going to be a figure that represents your physical body. So um, you could draw a stick person doesn't have to be sophisticated. I'm just going to draw a basic outline. Okay. So we're going to draw a figure that represents the body. And then I invite you to just sort of take a breath, drop your awareness inside your body, just down into the inner landscape of the body. And I would have you notice the quality of your energy. What is your energy right now? Is your energy high? Is your energy low? Is your energy soft? Is your energy hard? Is your energy jagged? Is your energy curvilinear? 
Is your energy red? Is your energy green? So we're gonna start playing with this metaphorically, right? Um, and then to, to depict on your body where and how that energy is expressing itself. So I usually recommend doing this as instinctually or impulsively or intuitively as possible. Try not to think too much about it. So for example, my hand was just drawn to this color and I find myself wanting to put it right here. And then I kind of just let go and let my hand move in the way that it wants to move. Here too. Okay. So um, this is the this is what came up for me in just a quick, this is sort of like a responsive piece. We're not thinking too much. We're just allowing the body to express what it wants to express. Um, it's just a quick sort of intuitive almost impulsive way of re responding to whatever you're, what's coming to you, right? And we try to sort of bypass the thinking part too much. So that's what I'm gonna call like our baseline drawing. So I invite you to just kind of examine it, take a picture, a snapshot of that in your mind. Um, just be aware that this is sort of like a, a baseline image of where you are in this moment, okay? And we're gonna set that aside for just a minute and I'm going to have you um, drop in, you're going to find that comfortable spot. I do request that you close your eyes and take a breath. And you don't need to change it initially, just noticing the way the oxygen fills your lungs and the way you are releasing it noticing the quality of your inner space. And I'd like you to imagine a seed in your third eye, the center of your brow, just dropping that seed down into your body, almost like dropping a stone through water, just letting it glide down the length of your torso, all the way down past your chest, your heart, your upper abdomen, your ribs, down further still past the intestines, the lower intestine, the stomach, down, 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 past the navel, to take root in your pelvis region, between your hips, in the genital region. And that seed is going to grow roots. And we're gonna extend those roots down the length of your legs, past your thighs, your knees, your shins, your calves, your ankles, soles of your feet, the balls of your feet, your toes, all the way down through the floorboards of your home, through the layers of crust and rock and soil and water, down, down these roots go all the way to the earth's molten core. And there Gaia, Mother Earth, she's so happy you came. She's been waiting for your arrival and she takes your roots and she wraps them around the earth's molten core and on your next inhalation you are drawing up from those roots all of the nourishment and grounding that you need thank you thank you and we're going to open up the crown at the same time and now we're gonna invite your soul, your essence, the whole of your energy to really sink down and inhabit your sacred temple where it is safe and where we are grounded. So, okay. Any energy that floats above our heads right now, anything disembodied, we are bringing it back down. It is safe to do so. Thank you, thank you. Yes, that feels good. Mm -hmm. okay. And you might start by noticing the most subtle sensations you may be having. Take a breath. And now we're noticing the most prominent sensations we may be having. And take another breath. And I want you to become aware of your skin. 
your epidermis, the edges of your body. This is what determines on the most material level what is inside of you and what is outside of you. And I would have you imagine the energy that emanates from your body, the energy that extends beyond your skin. You might see this as body heat. And I would have you picture that heat, that energy, like a sheath or a personal bubble or an aura that surrounds you at all times. And for the purposes of our exercise here today, I want you to know that you have complete command over this bubble. And we are gonna perform three exercises to help you get acquainted with it. So first, Imagine reaching out to touch the surface of the inside of this sheath, of this bubble that surrounds you. So you're just gonna reach out and touch its surface. And notice what that feels like. It's texture. It's color, it's viscosity, it's thinness, it's thickness. Is it flexible and pliable? Is it brittle and fragile? Just notice these nuances and subtleties. Now, secondly, I would have you imagine that with your touch, you can make this auric field expand and contract. You can make it stronger and more solid or thinner and more flexible. Now on your next breath, make it solid and thick and see how that feels for a moment. You're gonna use your imagination. This is called active imagination. On your next breath, you're gonna make it solid and thick and just see how that feels. Okay, take a rest, breathe out, release that. And notice what was the feeling? Did it feel safe to have a solid and thick boundary? Did it feel closed off? Did it feel restrictive, scary, relieving, containing? Was it tense? Was it fortified? Just see what comes up. Now on your next available inhalation and exhalation, we're gonna release that rigidity and instead we're gonna make it soft and pliable. Not weak, just a little more fluid, flexible, and we might even say semi-permeable, okay? So in, softening, 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 flexible, fluid, semi-permeable. If it takes a couple breaths, that's okay. Softening, 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 pliable, flexible, fluid, semi-permeable. And now just notice how that feels. How this shifts the way that you are inhabiting your body. 
maybe there's something sensorial that pops up. Maybe there's a thought or a feeling or an intuition or a memory, an image, a symbol, a color. It's all correct. And just notice the feelings that come up in this case. Does this feel safe? Does this feel scary? Does this feel relieving? Does this feel containing? Does this feel rejecting? Does this feel receptive? What do you, what do you know? What does your body know? What does your energy know about soft, pliable, fluid, flexible, semi-permeable? And just take note of it. And we're gonna take another breath. Release that. And lastly, we're going to expand and shrink this boundary. So now we're gonna take in another breath. And on the exhale, imagine pushing your boundary out to its biggest circumference, the widest periphery you can get it. So push it out, extend that boundary, make your bubble huge. Now take another breath, expand it even further, pushing it out, throwing your energy, taking up all the space that you can. One more, Ooh, push it out, push it out. Look at how big you are. You're huge. And just notice how far you can expand this boundary. And again, take a few moments and notice how it feels to have your boundary stretched that wide around you. You might even notice if something happens to the integrity of it. And just be with that for a moment. Notice the feelings coming up. Again, it could be a sensation, a thought, an image, a symbol, a song, uh, a memory, an intuition. It could be static. It's all right. It's all correct. Okay, so take another breath. Now we're gonna bring it in. Okay, so we're going to take those edges, that boundary, that circumference, and when you breathe in, we're gonna suck it in, right? Bring it in. Right. One more, reach out, bring it in. Shrinking around you. Right. Next inhale, bring it in again. Bringing it in tight around you. And we're going to continue that rhythm until your boundary, your auric field is closely, closely, closely tucked around you. Closely tucked around you, barely taking up any space at all. Maybe it's imploding, like someone mentioned before. How does that feel? What do you know about that? Is that safer? Is that restrictive? Is that exhilarating? Is it containing? Is it tense? Maybe there are some other words coming up for you. Just noticing that feeling. Now you're gonna take another breath and exhale and release it. Release that practice. And I want you to fall into your own rhythm of breath. And as you fall into your own rhythm of breath, notice where and how your auric field feels the most comfortable returning to baseline.
Notice what kind of circumference that requires. Notice what kind of integrity that boundary requires. Thickness, thinness, flexibility, rigidity, viscosity, thinness, thickness, distance from you, from your body pushing out into the world or from your body pushing into the inner landscape. How far is a comfortable circumference for you with your boundaries? And just breathe easy. Breathe in the way that feels good for you, however that is in this moment. And I invite you to take a snapshot of that in your mind. Breathing in this experience almost as if it is a fragrance. Letting it sink into your cells. And just breathing easy for a moment. Now we're gonna regard this as a blueprint to follow as we continue to cultivate our personal boundaries. And as we come back into the room, back into the present moment, I would have you notice the most subtle sensations that you may be having and the most prominent ones. We're gonna be aware of our roots as they are connected to the earth right now. And we're gonna keep those in place for as long as we can. Remembering that you always have access to this nourishment through your roots and you can breathe in as much nourishment as you need, reminding you of your life force energy and your connection to source and all that is. We're gonna go throughout the rest of our day nice and grounded and fed. And so finally, I am going to count backwards from five to one. And when we reach one, we can release this practice. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. So we are gonna come back into the present moment, back into the room here together and I would like us to once again, look at the drawing that we started with. Okay, so as a reminder, this was the drawing that I came up with. And now that we've gone through this exercise of exploring our, our own energy, our own most fundamental boundary um, through a sort of metaphorical exploration of how we can expand and contract it, how we can solidify it and we can make it more loose, more fuzzy, noticing now where is the most, what's the most comfortable expression of your auric field, of your energy, of your boundary? And you can either add to the drawing, you can add something to it, what needs to be added to it to uh, create that sense of security and safety in its most comfortable baseline, or you can create an entirely new drawing to depict that. I think for me, I'm probably gonna do an entirely new one, but I'm gonna do it right next to the other one so we can compare. So let's play with that. Yeah, okay. So now my energy feels, you, you can see, and even in your own imagery, you might notice a drastic difference from where you started to where you wind up after doing an, an embodied practice like this. Um, but you can <clears throat> the idea is that you know when we started we we're talking about building the emotional vocabulary and then developing the boundaries around it and we mentioned how building that emotional vocabulary requires noticing the energy in the body assigning a symbol to it and then in time those symbols become organized enough that we can assign language to them right so you can see how this starts to work on the nonverbal level on the level of the body right and we're sort of bypassing all the mental, intellectual, ego chatter 
that tries to figure things out. And now we're just kind of feeling our way through it, right? And we're able to use tools like this to help us get from that kind of overwhelmed, chaotic, sort of disorganized feeling where we're labeling all the feelings as bad. And we're able to kind of sift and sort by being able to say, well, my feeling, I'm feeling this tightness, this constriction, I'm feeling contained, I'm feeling this, like this weight bearing down on my head. But now it feels like I have an airy, an airiness around my figure. There's a sort of a delicate kind of swirling to my energy. It feels kind of like things can get in, but they can also get out. But I don't feel like it's, it's not gauzy. It's not too filmy. It's not too fuzzy. Um, and then this, this was mental energy. I, now I feel it kind of like a cool spiral or a cool breeze kind of blowing around. Whereas before it was like a heavy wind in my face, you know? So these are all words that we can use, creative ways that we can start to talk about the inner experience. And once we have an ability to do that, now the inner experience is not so mysterious. It's not so vague. And it's that much easier to communicate something without feeling triggered. Or when we are triggered, how to move through that trigger by even doing an exercise just like this, right? Taking a time out and doing an exercise like this. Now, the purpose of this activity is just to become aware of how your boundaries are often manifested through an energetic and emotional experience. It is pre-verbal. So when we are confused about where the edges of our boundaries lie, it's easy for them to become dismissed, abandoned, or completely ignored or misunderstood. Activities like this, which work on the level of the body, the unconscious, and the imagination, will help you get acquainted with your boundaries creatively, symbolically, and sensorially. The more you do this in time, you will learn to recognize when your boundaries are hardening or softening, expanding or contracting, and you will be better able to recognize and verbally translate what you need as a result of it. For example, learning to say yes more often in order to meet a growth challenge or learning to say no so that you stop depleting yourself. I also have two other demonstrations available on my YouTube channel for activities like this. The first is Art Therapy Techniques, Tools for Secure Attachment. The second is called My Personal and Practical Routine for Accessing My Inner Being and Self-Security. Now, if you like this activity and you'd like to learn more, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. You can also ring the bell for notifications. I take all comments into consideration when considering future video topics. Thank you so much, and I hope that you have a wonderful week.